Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and I have come to share another dream. I had this dream on 8 24 24 at 12 35 a.m. This was the first dream I had this night. The second dream I had, I've already shared, it was about the deceptive dream of Don the wedding of Donald Trump. This dream came prior. Again, 8 24 24 at 12 35 a.m. It is entitled, The Manhattan Dream. So please, let's pray and ask Jesus Christ to have His perfect way, Father God's perfect will, to be done in all this. Try, test, discern all this. I have had on to this. I just I didn't know if I was supposed to share it or not. And um, somebody had asked in Telegram, and I still didn't have an answer. I was actually praying about a word I had received today. And asking the Lord about it, which it is to go out. I tested and tried it. But then he said, do the dream first. So that, Lord willing, is what we're going to do. Alright, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Now, Lord, I ask in Jesus Christ's name to be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. With no retaliation, backlash, interference. Directly, indirectly, randomly. And such like things of your knowledge, Father God, that the enemy would try to do. In Jesus Christ's name. And I command and decree you will not do it. Stand on Job 22, 28. Now, Lord, I also reiterate and activate the no retaliation clause that I have written up with your help, Lord. Other people, learning from other people, that is what you have given me, Lord. And I stand on it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, I bind all interferences that would try to interfere with this video being recorded. All demonic activity, your demons and demons are bound in the name of Jesus and cast into the abyss. They're bound in everlasting chains standing on Jude 6. And I request heavy burdens, grievous torments, and that they be kept into the abyss until the time, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. That they are to be thrown into the lake of fire. Unless you see fit to do otherwise. I will not go against you. I'm praying that everything I pray. Father God. Jesus Christ. I say right here and right now. It can be changed any way you need it. I'm putting my requests. My petitions. But I'm praying it all. But according to your perfect will. You know what's best. I can make my petitions known. But if they are to go somehow. Against your will. Or cause something to be delayed. Or something to. You know it all, Lord. So your will be done. I'm, I'm not going to go into any more explanation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, send this out. North, south, east, west, Holy Spirit on your wind. Send this out. Open our eyes and our ears to the truth of your word. To the truth of you, Jesus Christ. You said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. What does that mean? There's no way to heaven. There's no way to Father God, God in heaven, the Creator, except through Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He is the only way. There are not many ways to God, the God of heaven, the true living God, Jehovah, Elohim, Yahweh. There's only one. Jesus Christ bridged that gap, excuse me, bridged that gap, gap in the name of Jesus. I bind all hindrances. I understand all weapons, gizmos, gadgets, devices, towers, all atmospherical. Yes, Lord, I understand. You are bound in the name of Jesus and everything is sent back. Stand on Proverbs 26, 2, which says the curse causes shall not come. And the reason I stand on that is because I do not accept your curses. I do not accept these attacks. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ according to the word of God. Luke ten nineteen. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. This is not negotiable. This is not and if. This is how it is written. This is how it is written. Matthew twenty eight eighteen. Jesus says, All power has been given unto me. Luke ten nineteen. He says, I give all power unto you. Who? His children. His disciples. His children. Because we are included. And we know that when Jesus Christ in John 17 is praying for those to come. I thank you for including us, Lord. 
In Jesus Christ's name. Now, Lord, I ask that the mouths be shut and the interferences be stopped. I cancel all witchcraft, all forms of attack that you have knowledge of, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I send. What is it, Lord? And it is Shiva Mohon and in the name. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ against every AI system or any other type of computer system, technology, or such like. I send forth viruses upon viruses that inside of these viruses that will eat into every system that God Almighty wants to, it will have that holy algorithm that cannot be solved by anybody but God Almighty. Nothing. Nothing. And it will be in an infinity loop so that as each time you pass trying to solve this new demons and spirits and computers and all such light technology, you will erase part of your systems, the ones that God chooses in Jesus Christ's name, and not sequestering one bit unless Father God allows it for every system inside this firmament in Jesus Christ's name and for those to come in all your existence, and that means past, present, and future, in the name of Jesus Christ. Send it out, send it out, send it out, Lord. I ask you take the I ask that the hundreds and seven fishers of the Lord, Jeremiah 16, 16, would go forth into every area, every location, with the kingdom keys, Matthew 16, 19, Lord, but according to your will. I give you praise. I give you praise. Lord, I thank you for your word. Psalms 144. 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. I didn't know how to fight, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't. And I took that verse and I prayed it. Lord, this says, Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Teach me how to war, how to fight physically and spiritually, spiritually and physically, just in case I need it. Which I don't. I just stand in the word of God. And you have proven faithful. As Deuteronomy 7, 9 says. You have proven faithful. And you have walked me through on how to fight. But with an understanding. You just didn't say it's in my name. You made me walk through stage upon stage. Understanding, understanding. This is witchcraft. This is charms. This is this. This is this. This is how you do this. This is weapons. This is the voice of God technology. All of this so I have a clear understanding exactly what, to my bit of knowledge, your name covers. It's all. Your name. Your name is all powerful. But in all this you built my faith up. Where I know that I know that I know that I know. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in your name. That your name has been given all power. Philippians 2. 9 through 11. Lord, that name above all names, Jesus Christ, you are the Word made into flesh. And when Father God was speaking today, when I received that Word, Jesus, the way, well, I'm sorry, when Jesus was speaking to me, because Father God, you were speaking to me earlier, this, this time when the Word came forth to be shared, the way you said it about creation and how you moved, it opened up my understanding. I thank you for the Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 moments, every single one. Holy Spirit, thank you, dear, sweet teacher and friend and comforter. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Is there anything else I need to pray? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, your word says the, weapon of our warf the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. That's in 2 Corinthians 14. Not 100% sure, Lord. Strongholds. Anything being built up against us. Strongholds. Any fortress that the enemy has made to stand against us. I tear them all down in the name of Jesus Christ. That pertains to me, this ministry, my family. Directly or indirectly and all such like. In these sites, Lord. These, my lovely Jesus ministry sites. 
They're yours, but you have set me over it. So, Father God, I say they're yours. I give them right back to you. Your will be done in all things. I humbly bow to your authority. I love you. Your will be done. I cannot let my personal feelings. I have to stand by your rules. There's things I would allow that you have set the rules. I'm standing by them, Lord, in your name. Your will be done in all things. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's starting to get dark. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His cup, I don't even see it. Never give up. <laughs> That's a Philippians 4.13 cup. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, hallelujah. All right, this is a Manhattan dream. It's a short dream, but it's a dream. I dreamed last night again about the 12 hidden suitcase. Let me let me say this. I'm grateful for every dream, even those, every vision, every dream. I know some people say, why would you, why? Somebody has to warn. So even though I see a lot of horrible things to say, just say, say the least, the Lord Jesus Christ has given me away. I take time, I grieve, I cry over it and go on. Such is the way with this. I dream last night again about the 12 hidden suitcase nuclear rogue devices hidden inside of America. Ten will detonate, two will not, according to the last dream and words you have given me. Words you have given me, lovely Jesus Christ, to share. The last dream was titled, Now There Will Only Be Ten Dream, ten dream on 8-19-24 at 10.39 a.m. In this dream, I was looking over a great city. I knew somehow this is Manhattan in New York. Manhattan, I have since researched, is one of the five boroughs in New York City. As I'm looking out across the sky, I realize I heard no other sound. It's as if everything was frozen in time. Suddenly, I heard a loud noise like a deep rumbling that grew in its intensity. There is a bright flash of light and I saw a raging fiery mushroom cloud form above the city as great wind, fire, and heat devastated this area. I saw also city lights flicker and go out. Then suddenly there appeared in front of the mushroom cloud over Manhattan my lovely Jesus Christ. He is suspended in the air. He turns and points to the exploding mushroom cloud that angrily devastating that's angrily devastating downtown Manhattan and he said, "This is not the first strike upon your once great nation by Putin's hand, but in addition to This time is now, daughter." The hidden suitcases with the rogue nuclear devices are in addition to the nuclear and other weapon strikes that fall from the sky against your broken land of Babylon. For great is her evil. Great is her wickedness. This is the first of a series of lethal blows that is sure when Putin of Russia of the bear fires your nation shall fall never to recover before the one hour the 60 minute mark has expired from his attack with others now it starts i start it all babylon must fall and fall she will and that was all the dream but it was enough to keep me awake for a while and the verses chapter um revelation chapter 18 jeremiah chapter 51 excuse me Zechariah 14, 12, and 15. Ezekiel 16, 15 through 43. And that's all the verses that he gave me. So I ask that you take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. In the word that he gave me, he was talking about 
when he said day and night, night and day. One day contains night and day, you know, the, the 12 hour, 12 hour, which is not actually 100% accurate because seasons and, and different things, all the changes and manipulation with time and everything too. But he keeps telling me, we are in the very last hour. The minute's ticking down before the great day of the Lord starts. And within the great day of the Lord will be, well, just read it. it. It's a great and terrible day of the Lord in one place it calls it. And it's a day of wrath. It's great and terrible. Within it's going to have the great earthquake, destruction, wars. The seven year tribulation. It's going to have the millennium reign. And then at the end of that, if I'm understanding correctly, is when New Jerusalem comes down. The new heaven, new earth. Now, do I need to talk about that? Many times, and even in words from Gabriel, it has been said. We're in tribulation days. That means tribulation days is in Matthew 24. And if you'll go back to some of the words where Gabriel has spoken, he explains it. Not the actual tribulation period. Tribulation days, times of testing, times of purging, times of, of Daniel. Is it 925 where it talks about the Antichrist? Or is it 9? It, 725, I believe it is. Of course, they've changed that verse too, but I'm just going to pray. You just take it Jesus Christ in prayer. Daniel 7.25, I believe it is. Because <clears throat> 9 is about the, the com confirming of the covenant. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints. When I grew up, he would try to wear out the patience of the saints. There's a big difference there, isn't it? Wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into the hands until a time and times in the dividing of time. So even before the Antichrist actually rises to full power, he has been crowned underground. I've had dreams and visions of that, and it's been confirmed. With that being said, Everything has to be laid out for him. Laws changed, things done, uh, persecution coming, hatred toward the Christians. All this has to be in place. Let's go a little further. You've got to have population reduction. Why? So Antichrist, Antichrist can control the whole world with an iron fist. You have to bring down some of the strong powers. The strongest nations. So Antichrist can control them. Right now, as it is, even though we're not what we used to be, America, when something happens, she is a forefront nation. Supposed to be. Has been in times past. She cannot remain that in any Christ rule. All right, hold on. I love you, Lord. Thank you. All right, now, I want to speak a moment. The Lord has laid this in my heart. In the Word... That I received. And it's something he's been talking to me about. Many people. In the church. And I say churches in the body of the church. Are struggling with bitterness. If you do not let bitterness go. It will keep you out of heaven. It will keep you out of the rapture. And it will keep you out of heaven. If you do not repent of it. Now bitterness can occur because something you deserve should have went to you, didn't, like a job promotion, and it didn't. And you get bitter over that. You, you think on it and let it fester. Bitterness can occur from something very traumatic that happens, such as, as rape or child molestation, or anything like that. Bitterness can be caused from adultery. Bitterness can be caused just because you're jealous of somebody. 
like your friend that has another friend, even though, you know, you've been besties for a long time, and you get bitter. you got to guard against the root of bitterness. Because if you keep that bitter and you keep thinking about it, it will turn into a root of bitterness, and it, and it will eventually lead to hatred. You'll either hate that other person, like if it's in adultery, you might still love the husband or wife, even though you may be bitter toward them, but you, you can you end up hating the person. You you must forgive. If you don't forgive, you don't get forgiveness. I'm gonna read you some verses. Hebrews twelve, fourteen through fifteen. And I didn't pull these scriptures up because I was going to print them off. And the printers have a ink. <laughs> I gotta to talk to our acquaintance here and we're staying out of Kansas home right now. Hebrews. I'm in every book the Hebrews. <laughs> See, I want to just print them off. I'd have them. Lord, your will be done. I should have my other Bible too. It's all right. Hebrews 12, 14 through 15. This is important. This is why we've well, really been been talking about it. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Look diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You're no longer pure and holy with bitterness in you. Bitterness and unforgiveness go hand in hand. Ephesians 4, 29-32 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. We are forgiven by God because of Christ, because of Jesus Christ. Colossians 3. One of my absolute favorite books now. I love <laughs> Colossians. And always before, I just didn't read it much, but what I do now. Colossians 3. I'm going to read 1 through 10. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. In other words, Look for the things of the world. Don't fall in love with the things of this earth. Set your affection, your love, your, your desires and your wants to the things in heaven. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You're supposed to be dead in the flesh. Die to the flesh. As I say, take a baseball bat to the flesh and let the spirit man rise up. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Again, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, kill, therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now... Ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, out of your mouth. Oops. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Anger, hatred are all part of bitterness. Here's what the Word of God says about I'm not going to read this. Matthew 18, 21, 23. Peter is asking Jesus, how many times should I forgive somebody? Seven times? And Jesus replied, Jesus Christ, 
seven times 70 in a day. That's Matthew 18, 21 through 23. But we're going to find out now in Matthew 6, 14 through 5, it is basically the same as Mark 11, 25 through 26. But the Lord said to read Mark. And we're going to see how serious it is. You, you, you must forgive. You've got to get that forgiveness. For your own sake. And that way those people will not have any more control over your life either. Mark eleven twenty five, And when ye stand praying. So if you're praying. Forgive. Forgive. If ye have aught against any. Now, let me stop it there. Ought. That actually means Strong's G5100. The word T-I-S, tis. And it's got several meanings, but when you go to the Thyre Greek lexicon, it separates that verse with several others. And it means anything or something. So, ought is anything or something. Thank you, Lord. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have something or anything against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now, trespasses actually means a false step or sin to act to injure another. Something you have done against someone else. That's still sin. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you, forgive your trespasses. So if you're holding bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, if you're unwilling to forgive, but yet you're still praying and you're still doing all this, God is not going to forgive you till you make this right. What does that mean? Get on your knees and repent. You, you must forgive. And when you... And, and I'll say this again. Forgiving, letting go of this bitterness, is a choice. You have to choose to forgive that person. And it's possible through Jesus Christ. When I... Growing up, I dealt with molestation. I've been raped. All these things. I'm an overcomer. I'm just going to say that I'm an overcomer in Jesus Christ. But all these things, if I had allowed them to consume me, I would have been embittered and I would have been unusable and unprofitable to Jesus Christ. So when I say I understand, because I dealt with it, when I say I understand how people feel they deserve, they, they have that right to hold on to that. You don't know what was done to me. You don't know, you don't. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. There's still no right to hold on to it. Because by you holding on to that bitterness and that unforgiveness, you're not allowing Father God in heaven, Jesus Christ, to forgive you. You understand? You want to be forgiven? You've got to forgive. You must forgive. And Mark 6... 14 through 15 is pretty much the same. But I'm going to go back to Colossians 3 right quick. We read that where it talks about... Oh, I think I need to do it. My neighbor's dog has come in. So, Father God, don't let the little doggy bother us. Alright, Colossians 3. Again, 12 through 13. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of merciful kindness, of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Now, long-suffering, again, is being patient to almost a point of painful. Forbearing one another. Forbearing. Bear with somebody. And forgiving one another. If any man hath a quarrel against, against any... Even as Christ forgave you also, so also do ye. As a child of God, if you're professing to love Jesus Christ, you're supposed to forgive. 
Seven times seventy per day. It doesn't say that's the end. Seven times seventy. Does that mean seven times seventy in an hour? Seven times seventy in a day? You know, seven times seventy. Okay. I have a note to read this. Let me see what this is. I'm going to print all this out. We'll go to Matthew 5, 23. Okay, Lord. Thank you. If you have been... Oh, let me say this. Now, I grew up in church, and I, I've had to leave churches. Some of the Lord ordered. But I got hurt in church, too. I mean, I stood up for... Went to, I'm going to say the head. Just say the head. I'm just going to tell like this. I went to the pastor and, and his wife because of um, sin that had been brought into the church and I was over the young people. And the young people brought it to my attention and I went to address it. I first made sure it was the truth and I went to address it. And I was told that, and this it was concerning a person that was in put in leadership and I was told whoever they put in leadership I was supposed to obey uh uh no 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 I obey Jesus Christ first and then when I'm in a church if the Lord has moved me there I am supposed to obey the pastor but if they're not lining up with the word of God and sin is let in I don't have to so I left I was hurt deeply hurt But I didn't just leave without praying first. Lord, am I supposed to go back? Because I prayed a while and, and, and really sought the Lord before I stepped out to do that. Because, Lord, this is my pastor. This is his wife, you know. And I prayed because I, I wanted, you know, Lord, I'm praying. Give me the words. And, and I, I was obedient to what the Lord Jesus Christ told me to do. Now, granted, I do not know how to pray like I do now. For what I knew at that time. And I, you know, I was not expecting, more or less felt like I got slapped in the face. I did not immediately say, I'm never going to come back. I did go home. I was hurt and I cried. But I went to the Lord, what do I do? If, if they're going to let sin in, what do I do? Now, my first instinct, honestly, was I never want to go back there again. I have been back to that church since then because the Lord told me to go. But... If you are hurt in the church and you leave without seeking Father God, Jesus Christ, to find out if you should leave or stay, because even though it would have been hard if He had told me to stay, I would have ended up staying because I was over the young people. Yeah, we had like 30 something young people in a little church. If you leave because somebody hurt you without finding out from God that's what you to do, then I'm going to ask you this. Was your faith in the people in that church or in God? We go to church to serve God. He puts us in a body at times to work and, and be unified. Regardless, you must forgive. Matthew 5, 23 through 24. All right. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, we come to pray to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, has anything against thee. So if, if somebody has hurt you, they're supposed to come to you. Now, if you've done it, this, I'm, this is, I'm telling you what to do. If you've hurt somebody, and you know you have, I pray that person's able to forgive. You know, forgiveness is the key, a choice. But the Lord wanted it all put in so you know the steps. It goes both ways. So Matthew 5, 23 through 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou and there remember that thy brother hath aught against thee, again, aught, anything, or leave there thy gift. Don't go any further. Don't try to pray. Before thy altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother or sister. And then come and offer thy gift. 
very clear. Matthew 18. And see, I I hadn't studied all this when I was when I was going through all that myself. But now, if something happens, I, I try to go at least two times or three times to somebody, and even and bring people in, like the scripture says, Matthew 15, uh, Matthew 18 verse 15. Moreover, if thy brothers shall trespass against thee, if somebody's hurt you in the church or or a friend or that is confessing to be a child of God, okay? Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. You go to them quietly, however you can. You don't broadcast it. If if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen and a publican. To give you an example, when I was mentioning, well, let me read this other verse first. Luke 17. Because the Lord has provided ways. So when you're hurt, remember first off, you must forgive. You've got to forgive. Because the bitterness, if you let it go into bitterness and it grows, it can cause much damage. Excuse me, I have a critter on my computer. Lord Jesus, help me. Luke 17, 3, 4. Take heed to yourself, if thy brother trespass, trespass against that sin that injures you, makes false claims, false accusations, you know, lying on you, whatever. Against the, rebuke him. Now, rebuking this is Strong's G2008. It's called Epitimao. Straightly charge. Go to him. Hey, look, you've done this. Don't always work out. If you can't talk to them verbally, try by phone, try by internet. I have even used email. You know, something I discussed recently. I used email three times and, and went. Okay, so. This works both ways. Holy Spirit, lead me. The whole point I'm trying to make. you got to let bitterness go. And you need to find out. What's the root of it? What's the cause of it? Now, I'm talking, I mean, it can be for any situation in life. But if you're in a setting where you have people professing to be Christians and a brother or sister hurts you, or you've hurt a brother and sister, sometimes we hurt them and we know we do, and we do not want to repent. Now, I've not done this in a long time. I have done it before. When I was out of the will of the Lord, I was still professing to, to you know, be a Christian, but wasn't living it. Thank you, Lord. I repented of that. And there's times when we know we might say a comment to somebody, and we can tell by a look at the face they took it wrong. You know, that's when we should stop right then and say, "I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that." If you truly didn't mean it as a a downgrade of whatever they took it as. We've got to be careful with our tongues. Holy Spirit, please help me pull this together. In Jesus Christ's name. Remember first and foremost, forgiveness is a choice. To get rid of bitterness, you have to choose to forgive. And you can only do that through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has a way of healing the souls. But if you want your soul to be healed, if you want that wound to heal up, you must forgive whoever's done you wrong. It doesn't matter whether it looks like the other person is getting off scot-free. Say, for instance, a person swindled you out of $2 million and they're off enjoying all that money. And you're a Christian and, I don't know, say for instance, it was money for a church. 
you must forgive them and don't let them have any power over you. Set your face toward Jesus Christ and Father God, knowing that if they don't repent, they don't make it right, Father God will take care of it. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord, I will recompense. But if you spend all your time worrying, if you spend all your time concerned, all your time grieving and bemoaning the fact that you lost the two million dollars, or even twenty dollars, let's say, face it, money is, you know, it is what it is. Money's just money to me. It's just a necessity. That's all it is. Regardless, you're letting that become obsessive to you. It's taking your time away from Jesus Christ. And they have power over you. The kingdom of darkness has power over you. Accessing your life. Causing all these things. Is well, number one, we're not supposed to worry. Be careful for nothing. One one translation says be anxious for nothing. But it says if God, if he clothes the sparrows and the, and the lilies in the valleys, how much more will he take care of his own? We're not to worry. We're not to worry. Worry is a sin. Worry is doubt that Jesus Christ, Father God, can take care of you. Now, if you start to worry, see there's a difference. If you start to worry, you need to stop. Repent and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. It's just like fear. We all have our moments of fear. What time I'm afraid, I will trust indeed. Psalms 56.3, even David had moments of fear. He didn't stay in it. We, we, we're, no, <laughs> we're not going to be 100% perfect. Only one man that was ever perfect, and that was Jesus Christ. He was God and man. But it's when we notice, and that's the Holy Spirit bringing it to your attention. When you notice, you're starting to err, starting to walk into fear, starting to walk into worry, starting to give in to bitterness. That's when you've got to stop and make a choice. Do I proceed and stay in fear, worry? unforgiveness, bitterness? Or do I turn around and trust the Lord for one and all? He, he is and what He says He is. My provider, my spiritual husband, my way maker, my strong tower, my shield, my buckler. Our Father owns a cattle on a thousand hill. In, I think it's Micah, it's one of the minor prophets. He says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Well, the earth is his in the fullness thereof. Why are we worrying? Seriously, why do we worry? Even though that's why we walk in faith, we don't have to understand how he's going to do it. We don't have to understand when he's going to do it. When Father God and Jesus Christ are going to move, we just have to remember and realize and trust in faith he will. Deuteronomy 7 9 says he is known as he is faithful unto a thousand generations and keepeth covenant, keepeth covenant and mercy with those that love him. Not the exact, you know, word for word, but that's what it means. So please pray about this dream. And it's what I'm trying to, what the Lord's having me to do, I'm trying to get through, is to help you to understand everything for every situation we need is in this Word of God. And there's things and ways that He has for us to go by to do it. And it's not well, it will keep us humble. But it's so we can be pure and found ready in Him. So, if you know you have done somebody wrong, you need to ask forgiveness and go make it right. If somebody has done 
you wrong. Here's the kicker. You must forgive them whether they ever make it right with you or not. Because it's your soul at, at stake. You are responsible for your actions. You will stand before Father God and Jesus Christ for every word, every action, and every deed that you have done. Your pastor can't get you in church to stand in front of you and say you were good. Everything you've ever done will be revealed. Every thought, every action, every word. Be careful about your idle words too. There's scripture that talks about idle words and jesting. Please seek these things out. Alright, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to try to put, if I have time, a lesson together on this. Because bitterness is a big thing. Unforgiveness is a big thing. And in a world where the enemy seeks to destroy every person, every human being, He starts out young. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He is faithful and he will always prove faithful. Jesus Christ is everything. All right. Lord, do you want me to do that or not? Okay. All right. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to accept him into your heart, it's as simple. Please say this little prayer with me. It's in, by faith and grace that you're saved. Not anything you do except believe and confess. Dear Jesus Christ, speak to my heart. Change my life. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and to wash me clean. I confess you are the Son of God and man too. That you came to this earth by virgin birth. And you rose again victorious after being crucified on a cross. I confess you here and now as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my everything. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. And it's that simple. Now before we continue, if you would like to ask the Lord to forgive you for the hard feelings, the unforgiveness, the bitterness, and any such thing, say this little prayer with me. Dear Jesus Christ, please forgive me for holding bitterness and unforgiveness toward anyone. I ask you to wash me clean with your precious blood and strengthen me. And I ask your sweet Holy Spirit to help me so that when these thoughts about this person or people or situation comes back up, I can cast it aside with your word. I will cast them down and I will defeat it in Jesus Christ's name. Until it no longer hurts, until it's no longer painful to remember, to remember. In your precious name I pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's that simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, for those of you that have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, I do recommend, if you don't have a hard copy Bible, please get one. I have the KJV. This is one of my hard copies. Excuse me. Ask you pray. And ask Jesus Christ or Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name to lead you to which translation would be best for you. And um, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you the truth of Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ to teach you. But you, you pray everything in Jesus Christ's name. As many deceptive enemies that profess to be Jesus, but it's Jesus Christ 
wherein you are saved. Whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. And the Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, this is a My Lovely Jesus ministry. Yeah, it's Jesus Christ's ministry. You can contact us on the Telegram group channel. That is the only place that I am currently available. And again, I please remind you, if you do continue to send personal messages through Facebook or Telegram, unless the Lord Jesus Christ leads me, I will not even look at them, just so you'll know, because I'm focusing my time on Jesus Christ and Father God. And then I, I do look in on the Telegram. I do sometimes speak in there, but it is mostly... Just being obedient. It's just being obedient. And my time is precious because every free moment I get, I want to spend it with Jesus Christ. This is how Jesus Christ has told me to do it. There's no email to contact me. There's no other way to contact me directly except through Telegram group channel. The My Love of Jesus Ministry. The link will be under this video or under the others. So please, and it is for prayer requests, the group is for prayer requests, and for other things. Again, I will reiterate though, it is not for other prophetic things to be put on there, or videos or other things that I will have to spend time watching, trying, and testing, and discerning to see whether or not it can be left on there. For one thing, not everything's godly that comes through. It's truth with deception, or just all out false. I do not want to put that through into my eyes, my ears, my spirit, and fight those things. So I went to the Lord and he said, well, this is how I said, nothing prophetic or anything else, any videos, anything that has to be discerned. Even preaching sermons, unless it's already been discerned and tried and tested. And that's the way it is. But you're free to post otherwise. Pictures. Discussions. Bible verses. But just know. If you start posting prophetic. I take a link off today. I will just. So if the Lord tells me to give a warning. I'll give a warning. That it's going to be removed. And if not. I just, I just take them off. Because I'm just being obedient. And all I can say is. I love you. If you don't like it. Then you know. There's other groups. This is how we're going to do it. This is also part of keeping it safe. There's a lot of young people, young Christians. I'm going to say young Christians. I can't say young people. Still learning how to discern, try, test. Even some people that's been in it for years. So please. I'm not here for likes. I'm not here to gather great numbers if I reach one I'm happy because one will make a difference to that one soul if it doesn't end up in hell that's what it's all about I will never be swayed by numbers likes compliments it's all Jesus Christ Stay humble and realize you're nothing without Him. He's everything. God bless. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ always.